Hey everyone, I just wanted to go over a new addition to my equilibrium calculator, which is on my website wjspaniel.wordpress.com. If you've seen it before, this was the landing page. It previously has had a 2x2 two two game matrix, which you could fill in, and whatever you input it, as long as there wasn't some strange problem involving weak dominance, out would pop all of the strictly dominated strategies, the weakly dominated strategies, the pure strategy in Nash Equilibria, the mixed strategy in Nash Equilibria, and the expected utility for both players if there is a mixed strategy in Nash Equilibrium. So that's all existed before. What I have added, though, is a calculator to help you out with an infinite prisoner's dilemma. So you might be asked, what is the minimum necessary discount factor for both players to have to sustain a cooperative uh, grim trigger equilibrium in an infinite prisoner's dilemma? And so this sheet here will help you out uh, by checking just for exactly what I asked. So there's two things that this, this sheet will do based off of whatever you input here. So you can input these numbers and change them at your leisure. The first thing that it will do is it will tell you whether or not what you've inputted is actually a prisoner's dilemma. So I have actually started out with a prisoner's dilemma that is uh, in there, that what I have in there right now is a prisoner's dilemma. What that's doing is checking to make sure that defect strictly dominates cooperate for both players, that the cooperate cooperate outcome is better for both players than the defect defect outcome, and also, and this is a strange quirk with an infinite prisoner's dilemma, that we, re that we require this payoff and this payoff, the average of those two payoffs, to be less than this payoff. So the average of 4 and 1 is 2.5, that's less than 3. And likewise for player 2, the average of 1 and 4 is 2.5, and, and that's less than 3. So as long as all of those requirements are fulfilled, this will be yes. And if not, it will be bad things. So let's change player 1's payoffs so that defect no longer strictly dominates cooperate, and there you go. So this is no longer a prisoner's dilemma, and if this is a no, then this is just not going to work out. So it's going to tell you this isn't a prisoner's dilemma. I can't answer that question. But if we do have a prisoner's dilemma, then what this will do for us is it will give us the minimum discount factor necessary for cooperation. And if you're familiar with Robert Axelrod's The Evolution of Cooperation, which is a great book and I recommend it to anyone who's listening, then essentially all this is doing is it's taking each player's temptation payoff, subtracting it by their reward payoff, and then dividing it by their temptation payoff minus their punishment payoff. And it's doing that for both players, and then it's taking the largest of those two numbers. If you're, again, familiar with the Grim Trigger strategy and the Prisoner's Dilemma, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, I'm sorry, you're going to be kind of up a creek here, but that's sort of true for anything in game theory where if you don't know what we're talking about, you're not going to really catch on unless you go back to the start. So apologies if you're not familiar with this, and this is all going to be perplexing, but if you are familiar with it, let's keep going. So what is this number calculating here? Well, it's taking the temptation payoff for each player, that's for player one, this four, subtracting it by the reward payoff, in this case this is three, so four minus three is one, and then it's dividing that number by... 4, the, again, the temptation payoff, minus the punishment payoff, 2. So 4 minus 2 is 2. We have 1 divided by 2. And then it's doing the same thing for player 2. And player 2's numbers are the exact same as player 1's. It's 4 minus 3 divided by 4 minus 2, which is also 1 half. And it's taking the largest of those two. In this case, it's the same. And it's putting that number right there. So that's 0.5. You'll notice that if we change this just a little bit, 4.5, well, that's going to change. So how is that getting calculated? Again, player 2's is 4 minus 3 divided by 4 minus 2, which is still 1 half, but player 2, or excuse me, player 1's is 4.5 minus 3, which is 1 and a half, divided by 4 and a half minus 2, which is 2 and a half. So it's 1 and a half divided by 2 and a half, which is 0.6. So 0.6 is the largest of the two things that I just mentioned, which is why it's producing it right here. So this is actually the minimum discount factor necessary for the player is to sustain a grim trigger strategy equilibrium in an infinite prisoner's dilemma. And that will work for anything that you put in there, right? as long as it's a prisoner's dilemma, of course. And of course, if it's not, they'll tell you that right there. So I hope you enjoy it. Again, you can find it at wjspaniel.wordpress.com. And even if you're not familiar with the prisoner's dilemma, if you haven't seen this before, this is a great tool overall to use to check your answers, especially for the two by two games. So I recommend you look into this even if you have no idea what an infinite prisoner's dilemma is, there's still a lot of other things that you can use this for, and I really recommend that you check it out on my website. That's all. Take care.